Well, good morning. How's my family this morning? You know, have you ever had God pull you out of your comfort zone and get you all shook up and then you just fall completely apart? I think that's what happened to me this morning. God has uh, made me a little uncomfortable this morning, and uh, he's probably going to make some of you uncomfortable this morning, but uh, we're going to go with it anyway, even if Buster's going to tell us jokes or whatever's going to happen, we're going to go with it, okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this beautiful day to you. Father, we're thankful. We're thankful in all things. We come to you humble, Father, as we should. And Father, this morning, I pray about this message you've uh, laid on my heart. Father, I pray that uh, it would not be offensive. Father, that it would be clear, that it would convict someone. That it bring your light into everyone's heart, Father, that we would see the fault in our ways. Father, but most of all, that uh, it would start a change, a change in lives that uh, need changing. And we can all use with a little change, we know that. Father, I pray you come and sit among us, that your presence be felt throughout this building. Father, that you move me out of the way, you place your hand over my mouth and let what comes out of my mouth be pleasing to you. Father, we ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Well, here we go. This message uh, this morning was inspired in a message that I heard from Pastor Craig Groeschel uh, that my wife actually sent to me. And uh, some of the material that I'm going to uh, speak about was provided by his message which was really powerful, and I thought it would be a, a good part of that to share this morning. So this morning, we're going to be talking about those people. And if you find yourself offended, then you might just be one of those people this morning. In that case, all I can say to you this morning is, bless your heart. Many of us know some of those people. The ones who know everything about everything. You may be or might have been one of them. So you might not want to be looking around the church too hard, all right? Sometimes those people can be a little out there. A little crazy. And they're everywhere, everywhere we go. They tend to know everything about everything, and they want to tell everyone every chance they get of how much they really know. You know, I heard a story one time from Justin Wilson. I don't know if you know who Justin Wilson was. He was old Louisiana Cajun, and he had some good stories. And he told about this man one time that was a government official, and he showed up at a man's farm. And he had a card that he showed to this man. And he said, man, this card right here gives me the right to go and see and look at anything on your property. I can do whatever I want because of this card. And this farmer goes, well, you just go right ahead and see whatever you want. And he went back in the house. And shortly after that, he heard screams coming from out around his barn. And he goes out there and in the corral... This man's running for his life with a bull about two steps behind him. And this man just stood there and watched him go by three or four times. And he just kept screaming, you got to help me, you got to help me. Remember, this man knew everything. His card helped him. So this farmer goes, well, show him your card, show him your card. I like that. Because we don't always know everything about everything, Amen. You know, these people are the ones that are shouting the loudest, expressing their opinions on the Internet, spreading rumors about things they know nothing about at all. And there's always one in every family, always one in every family. And if you believe there's not one in every family, then it might be you. <laughs> a 
Are you offended? Are you feeling a little uncomfortable yet? I know I am. And I'm the one bringing the message. You know, if you're offended, then it might be just that the Lord's convicting you this morning. According to the Bible, we are called to love all people. Even those people who might offend us. All people. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. We're going to start right there this morning. If you would join me there, once again, I pray you brought your Bibles. Let's take God's word for it, not mine. And let's look at it together. Ephesians chapter 4, being at verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 26. Paul speaking here. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. In the first verse where it says, in your anger, do not sin. Right there, we can imagine and we can probably uh, believe that it means anger is not a sin. But anger can cause us to sin. Amen? Because even Jesus got angry. But he didn't allow it to make him sin, right? So we can all get angry. That's pretty well telling us that anger is not the sin. It's how we deal with anger and how we use anger that can cause us to sin. And there's so many things in this world today that even as Christians... It can offend us and make us angry. And many of you have been there, and many of us are, are there today. Pastor Craig offered this about being offended. Being offended is inevitable. Living offended is a choice. Amen. I agree. You may find yourself offended today at some point. This message may offend you. I may offend you. Or someone else may offend you before you leave here today. Either way, you have a choice of how you respond to it. Amen? If you choose to stay offended and become angry, then you are giving the devil a foothold in your life. If you choose to handle it that way. In Ephesians 4, it tells us, do not give the devil a foothold. And a lot of people, as uh, Pastor Craig was talking about, a lot of people believe this is, hey, like wedging your foot in the door. You know, don't let him get his foot in the door. Or maybe if you were climbing a mountain, you find a place, put your foot and hang on. They, they're thinking of that kind of foothold. That's not what that means at all. And, and that's where we have to define that. It... In the Greek word, better way to put that, do not give the devil a foothold. In the Greek word for foothold is tapas, which means place or room. It doesn't mean what we're thinking at all. It means a place or room. So what Paul's telling us here is don't give the devil a place in your life or a room to run around in your life and cause you to sin or to cause you problems in your life. And if you go on and you live offended and angry, then you're giving the devil room in your life to do things that controls you. You're giving him a place at the table. We've, we, Terry talked about this yesterday at, at the ladies deal that we give the devil a place at our table to sit with us. Well, this is what we're saying. You're giving the devil a place in your life to control your life or disrupt your life or be part of your life. So don't give the devil a foothold. That's what, that's what Paul's saying right here. Make sure you keep him out of your life. Why would we want to give the devil any access to anything in our lives? Why would anyone want to do that? Well, we find ourselves doing it regularly. When he gains a foothold, he can have access to our marriages, our families, our friends, and much more. We can even allow him access to our church because we've allowed it. And remember that word. That word I use a lot is allowed because that's what happens. We have a choice in everything. God gives us free will. So we have a choice to make in everything, whether it's right or wrong. 
but it's what we allow. It's what we allow into our lives, what we feed our hearts and our minds with. From social media to TV to news to everything, what are you feeding your heart and your mind with? It's what we allow. Now, if we looked at Ephesians 4.29, let's go there. Let's look at Ephesians 4.29 right here. We're, you're already there. Just a little, a little bit more down. Skip down. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. If you can't say something good, don't say anything at all. Amen? That's pretty clear. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. We should never raise our voices unless you're preaching. We should never call names unless you're preaching. No? No, that don't work. Okay. We should never bring up the past because it's the past. And never quote your pastor during a fight. I don't need that part of the problem, okay? You know how a husband and wife get in that fight? Well, the preacher said this. And then they're calling me on the phone. Did you say this? No. I don't remember that, right? The Bible tells us that the devil schemes against us. And when we hang on to our anger and bitterness... It allows him to use those schemes against us. He would love to break the heart of God and hurt God's people. That's his goal. He would love to do that. And if we're not careful, we'll allow him to do that. I don't think he's going to break the heart of God, but he sure can hurt God's people. Amen? One of his schemes is to divide families, friends, and churches. And this has been fairly simple for him here lately. He's been running amok. He has used politics, racial divisions, along with misunderstanding and toxic opinions from all kinds of people. He's even used the COVID vaccine and masks to divide. There have been family members and friends that have stopped talking to each other. Because the devil gaining a foothold in their lives. He has even caused people to leave their church. Which works perfect for him. Because of his scheme he uses to try to divide Christians. That works great. I can get them to get out of their church and leave their church. Because they didn't do what we expected. Or they didn't follow what we, our opinion was. That's pretty direct. That's true. Dividing Christians suits the devil best because when Christians are united, they're very strong and they are a force to deal with. Amen? But when we become divided, we find ourselves weak and ineffective. That's why it's so important that we stand together as a family of Christians here today. When the devil is allowed a place or room in Christian lives, he schemes to discredit their witness. He wants us to find faults and problems with everybody else so he can distract us from our mission. And we can find fault with everyone else. There was a story a pastor told about a lady in his church, and that's all she did is complain about everybody around her. She's pointing them out to the pastor, this person, this person, complaining about them all the time. And the pastor told her, said, let me, let me try something with you here. So he filled a glass with water, and he asked her to carry it all the way around the church without dropping one drop. She knew she could do this, and she did. It took her a little while. She came back and handed it back to him said, I didn't spill one drop. He said, why is that? She goes, because I was focused on the glass. He said, then that's what you need to focus on is God, not everybody else. Amen. True. Because sometimes we get to pointing out everybody else's faults and we forget to look at our own. And are we the one that knows everything about everything? I don't know everything about everything. I just got a mic. Right? 
So you think I got to be nervous when I walk up here and I'm trying to share with you what you need to do in your life and then I'm not doing it? That's nervous. Because I'm infallible too. Just like every one of us. And that's why I say don't look to me, look to God. Don't follow me, follow God. And I pray that God's leading me and all these other pastors that walk up here, our leaders in our church, that's what we need. But don't find problems with everybody else. It's clear right now that the devil is having a good time in our world today because he's succeeding in many of his schemes that he has set in play. And it's not just outside these walls. It's right here in the church. And it's in many churches today. He's trying to get a foothold in there. Well, I'll tell you, we kicked him out of this church a long time ago. And we're going to keep him out. He will not gain a foothold in here. Amen. Can we all agree on that? Amen. There you go. You know, some of the most friendly and loving people I know ever re revealed a mean and hurtful side that has hurt many people and discredited their witness because they've given the devil a place or a room in their lives. Very, very nice people that you would never, ever believe that they would, they would be that way. But they've opened that door just enough for the devil to step in. And then they've allowed him full access. Back in Ephesians 4.26, Paul says, Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Rather, what he's saying here is do not let your day end when you're still harboring an offense against someone. Don't let your day end that way. Because when you do that, you're allowing the devil to steal your joy. Ruin your night, your day. You know, you find yourselves waking up during the night, not sleeping. I've been there. Pastor Craig broke it down this way. The day of your hurt should be the day of your healing. Amen. Fix it right then. Don't let it fester. Don't let it become a cancer that just spreads through you, your family and friends, even your church. The same day someone offends you should be the very same day as a follower of Jesus Christ, you're working to bring reconciliation into that relationship right then. The day that happens is the time to take care of that. Don't let it build. And this should apply to our marriages, to our families, and to relationships with our friends. How different do you think our world would be than on that same day of the hurt, as followers of Jesus Christ, we worked toward healing immediately. Change the whole world, amen? And then we finish up right here. If you're still with me, we're in... We're still in Ephesians. Ephesians 4, we're going to look at verse 31. We're going to follow up right here. Where Paul says, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. I want to pinpoint something for you right here, and I want you to look at this. This really deep and, and grab hold of this. The one thing in this scripture for us all, it says, get rid of all. Get rid of all. Not just part of it, get rid of all. Not just some bitterness, not just some rage and anger. It says, get rid of it all. We're not too good at doing that, are we? We can let a little bit of it go, but man, we have a hard time letting it all go. And as you can see right here, Paul does not say this. Be arrogant about your moral superiority. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say be critical of everyone who thinks differently than you do. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say be harsh because you're dealing with idiots. He doesn't say that, right? I don't know what he's thinking. He didn't say it, right? But Paul does say, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. There was a question that was asked during this whole thing, and it says, where can 
Where can you be kind and compassionate to one another? Where can you do that? The answer is actually you have to be up close. It's almost impossible to be kind and compassionate from afar. Because it's like saying, I forgive you. I just don't want to be anywhere near you. Amen? That's hard. It's easy to shout and offend while hiding behind a text or a social media post or even through another person. Easy, real easy to be shouting. Put it in big letters, right? I've had some emails sent to me that way in text in big letters. I just figured they couldn't see it or thought I couldn't see it. I didn't know they were... I didn't know till my grandkids said, hey, they're shouting at you. <laughs> that made it great. They know all. It's ineffective to shout and be angry from a distance. Very ineffective. It is, though, incredibly effective to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to become angry while getting in someone else's world. To understand their hurts, their fears, to have compassion for a different way of thinking instead of trying to be right all the time and forfeiting God's call to be loving. Being right all the time. Know anybody like that? And being right... Is not always best. I was given some advice from an older gentleman, gentleman before I got married. He said, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I'm a happy, happy man. I'm a happy man, right? Okay, just, being, just checking. <laughs> That's bad, I know. I've learned that forgiveness is one of the greatest tools in my life. And when I show compassion and forgiveness to the ones of those people who offended me, it releases me from the foothold the devil's trying to go, gain in my life. It releases me from that foothold. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Today, you may have been offended already. You may be offended by this message and wonder, how is it that, Pastor, you can talk about those people? What gives you the right to talk about those people? The reason I can talk about those people because I was one of them and still are a little bit, maybe a lot. I don't know. You have to ask my wife, but, you know, maybe a little bit. I was one of them. I can talk about them because I used to say I might not always be right, but I'm never wrong. I found out I'm wrong a lot. She tells me. God convicts me, right? So it's easy to talk about them. But not only was I one and that maybe still am, maybe you are also. And you don't even know it. There's one thing for sure. There is still and always will be a little bit of self-righteousness in all of us. Which leads us to always pray this one powerful and humbling prayer found in Psalms chapter 139, unit verse 23. Join me there, please. This prayer in Psalms can be one of the most humbling in your face prayers you could ever pray or ever read. Psalms 139, verse 23. Did I say it wrong? Psalms 139, verse 23. It says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Powerful. God, search my heart. 
Show me where I'm arrogant. Show me where I'm judgmental. Show me where I'm self-deceived. Show me where I'm harboring anger against anyone. Show me where I'm offending and not being kind or compassionate. God, help me resist the devil and not give him a foothold in my life or my church. Let my witness reveal a loving and forgiving heart that pleases you. Powerful prayer. Sometimes we're a little bit afraid of God to search our hearts. Because God knows everything about us. The Bible tells us he knows every hair on our head. He knows our thoughts before they come. He knows our thoughts when they're leaving. If you're filling your mind and your hearts with things that are unpleasing to God. And you think you know everything about everything. You might want to rethink that. You might want to say this prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Put on the full armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We just talked about how the devil schemes. That's why we need the full armor of God. That's why we need God walking with us. And to follow up with that, James 4, 7 says, Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. So how do we do that? devil's trying to get in our lives. He's trying to mess with our lives. He's trying to get a foothold. What do we do? Rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. Don't give him a foothold. Don't let him separate us and divide us. Don't let him do that with your family and your friends and your church. Love one another. The Bible's real clear on that. Love one another. And when you're kind and compassionate to people, you're showing the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's world, it's easy to offend or be offended. Very easy in today's world. So my prayer for everyone who hears this message today is to ask God to search our hearts and reveal the weakness that we may possess that may be allowing the devil a place or a room in our lives so we might resist him by strengthening that weakness and kicking him out of our lives also. You know, there's so many people with so many opinions. And everyone's entitled to their own. It doesn't mean your opinion's right. But it means you're, it's your opinion. And sometimes you need to keep your mouth shut and keep your opinion to yourself. <laughs> Don't speak unwholesome talk. If nothing good is going to come out, don't say anything at all. Your witness means more to God and to other people than you would even imagine. You're the book that some people, or the Bible that don't, some people only ever read. And by the way you act and the way you respond and the things you do when you're offended, will either draw people closer to God or push them away. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you once again this morning. Father, we are just so thankful. We're thankful for the favor you show on your church house and this church family. Father, I thank you for this family of church members here this morning. Father, I pray I didn't offend anyone. I pray that, Father, that we would look at, at ourselves and, Father, that we would ask you to search our hearts and reveal to us where our weaknesses are. Father, that we might grow closer to be more like your son, Jesus Christ that we would find kindness and compassionate to others when they're hurting and fearing and in need. Father, there's a lot of fear going on in this world today, and we can be that strength and that light to others. Use us in the way you see fit, Father. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give the glory to you. I pray this morning that everything we did, everything we said was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. Ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.